And as a consequence, that means you can only afford a smaller house. So right now we have the worst of both worlds. Rates have gone up and asset prices have also remained really high. And real estate markets have continued to grow, even though they've fallen a little bit among the West Coast right now, but not to levels that would um, uh, uh, correspond to the same increase that we've seen in the mortgage rates. So right now, right now, the Fed is at this crux. They have to, they're under pressure. People are saying, hey, you can start lowering rates. They know that when they lower rates, that signals that a period of growth could begin. That'll incentivize a lot of things to happen in the economy. A lot of industries are in a holding pattern right now. People are waiting for rates to decrease before they commit to investment. Um, for instance, we look at the mortgage market or the real estate market. We know that we need to build a lot more. A lot of builders are saying we're waiting for rates to come down before we can build more. And so as a consequence, and you have buyers saying, I'm not going to put my house on the market until rates drop. And then uh, you've got, uh, you know, um, I'm sorry, sellers saying they're not going to put their house on the market till rates drop. And buyers saying, hey, I can't buy a house until rates drop. And so people are waiting for the Fed to make this choice. But the Fed knows the longer they keep the rates higher, and as long as it doesn't negatively affect the job market, and it has negatively affected the job market, but our job market was really good, they know that they can push uh, inflation down. And so far, the sticky parts of this, what, what the Fed has been concerned about is what we call super core inflation. That's, that's inflation that isn't including volatile things like energy and houses, but deals with stuff like services, that haircut getting more expensive, the stuff for your lawyer getting more expensive, the professional services getting more expensive. All that stuff contributes to the Fed's perception of inflation, and they're still cautious around that. So Colin asked and say, is there a path to get them down to two? percent. I think they want to keep rates higher for longer. And I think they think in doing so, they might be able to slide by with this soft landing where you don't have a recession and you end up with 2% in inflation in the long run. But that means a lot of people are left in a position of stasis. A lot of rates remain high and they're in and, uh, and a lot of uh, things that are not fully corrected yet, like things like the housing market, asset prices and other things um, are going to continue to take a long time to adjust.